Welcome to antiderivatives and indefinite integrals. Uh, so, um, definition, we'll deal with the antiderivative first. So, an anti, oh, before we do that, uh, let's suppose that F is defined. on uh, interval i, then an antiderivative f of x on the interval i is a function for which the derivative of capital F of x, the antiderivative, is equal to our lowercase f of x, the original function. So again, in other words, uh, we have capital F prime of x is equal to our lowercase f of x. So again, um, essentially, lowercase f is acting as the derivative. Capital F of x is the original function, essentially. So we're basically undoing a derivative. So an antiderivative, capital F of x, on the interval i uh, is a function for which um, the derivative of capital F of x is equal to that lowercase f of x. Then an indefinite integral integral of f of x, uh, which we denote with this sort of very tall, thin, curvy s almost, and then f of x dx um, is the collection of all antiderivatives. So the indefinite integral is not one single function. It's possible that we will have, and in fact, it is, we do have infinitely many uh, antiderivatives for a single function. Uh, so the indefinite integral, we don't know precisely which one of those we're dealing with. It's just in general, all the antiderivatives. Um, and so then the question becomes, how do the various antiderivatives compare? So just a quick note, uh, when we go from a function to its derivative, the one part of the function that seems to disappear when we take a derivative is the constant, right? So recall, when we take a derivative, uh, the one part of a function that essentially disappears uh, is the constant term, right? If you think about polynomials, right? If we take the derivative of x squared plus 5x minus 2, 
Well, the x squared and 5x, we do get specific things from. We have the 2x and plus 5. But that minus 2 just goes to 0. So we essentially lose that part of the polynomial. And we lose that information. Um, so what we get then is uh, it turns out that that's really the only difference between the antiderivatives is what that constant term might be. Right? When we take the derivative, the constant term essentially disappears. We lose that information. Um, and so it turns out that's really the only piece of information lost in a derivative. So let's suppose that capital F of x and capital G of x are both antiderivatives of the function lowercase f of x. Then it turns out that uh, g of x, capital G of x, is equal to f of x plus c for some constant c. Again, when we take the derivative of that, um, the c would just go to 0. So we get the same, uh, we'll get both of them straight back to f of x. Right? So again, note that if we differentiate both sides, the derivative of g of x is just lowercase f of x by definition of an antiderivative. And the derivative of capital F of X plus C, we are looking at, um, well, the derivative of capital F of X is just lowercase f of X. The derivative of C would just be zero. And so we do get these are both equal. Uh, capital F of X plus C is still an antiderivative. Um, it is still, a der uh, if we take the derivative, we still get back out lowercase F of X. These are equal. We're just claiming um, that G of X must be just F shifted by a constant. So I'm just going to add note. Um, so what we wind up getting then is that when we take an indefinite integral, we know all antiderivatives can be written in the form capital F of X plus C for some C. Um, and so we can use that for our indefinite integral. Right? So what we get is then the indefinite integral of lowercase f of x dx is just equal to capital F of x plus c, where f of x, capital F of x, is an antiderivative. of our lowercase f of x. And c is just an unknown constant. So c could be anything we want. All of those would be antiderivatives. And it turns out that this capital F of x plus c is all possible antiderivatives. So essentially, we just need to be able to find one antiderivative, and then we know the whole set of antiderivatives. Uh, if we can find one antiderivative, uh, 
when we know them all. All right, um, so on the next video, we're just going to play around experimenting with how we might go around finding an antiderivative. Um, and then uh, in a video after that, we will uh, get some more precise, quick, common antiderivatives or indefinite integrals.